All right, here is a video of how to build your own numerical integrator in Microsoft Excel. So here's what we're going to do to begin with on this. We're going to create a function, uh, and to do that we'll pick any old x value as a, as a test value to stick in here, and we want to create a function based upon that. So we're going to go equals, um, let's see what should we do here, let's try uh, x to the the third minus two times e to the x. Enter. Okay, so there we've got an x value and a corresponding y value, and of course if I change my x value, my y value is going to change accordingly. So that'll define my function. Um, and then I want to pick some right bounds and left bounds for this thing. So let's suppose I want to integrate this from x equals 2 to mm, 8. And then we can find the corresponding y values for those by replicating the, the function in here. So I can drag this down and replicate the function. So now it's going to take 2 cubed times 2 times e to the second, and 8 cubed minus 2 times e to the eighth. So that's going to give me some values in there. And then I want to go ahead and start building my, my uh, numerical integrator here. So I've got my partitions here. I'm going to say, OK, I want to have 1, 2, 3, run down up to 32 partitions get those guys going. For each one of those I'll need to calculate the delta x, so the width of each partition. So to do that, I'm going to go equals, and then I'm going to have to take my right bound, take away my left bound, encase that in some parentheses, and divide that by the number of partitions I'm going to use here. Now I want the C4 and C3 to remain locked. I want it to stay those two values all the time. So I can tell it to lock those by putting dollar signs in front of the letters and the numbers and hit enter. So now if I drag that cell down, the only thing that should change is the number of partitions. So the width gets narrower and narrower and narrower as we go down. So that'll give me my partitions in there. Then to start chopping this thing up, um, we have to find our x values and our y values for each one of these things. So the first location of an x value is going to be the left bound, so that's going to be a 2. Aha, I think I've run myself into a little corner here. Alright, so continuing this. So I've inserted a row 0 here to show my uh, first x value, and then I have to select a particular delta x that I'm going to proceed with on this. So I've highlighted it in green, and if we look at the formula that underlies this, what it's doing is it's taking the left bound, C3, and it's adding to that the partition number times the partition width. So multiplying that is going to be 2 plus 0 times 0.25 for the first one, so it keeps me at 2, and then it'll add 0.25 to it for the next one. And notice I have inserted a few dollar signs in there to make sure that the values stay where they need to be. So if I drag that down now, as far as the highlighted green element, I can see I now have a width running from 2 to 8, and that matches my left and right bounds. So I have my idea of all of the x's that I'm going to pick. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the corresponding y values to each of those. So remember, before x was an 8 and the y value was this, and so on and so forth. So if I take this cell, and temporarily I'll come back and add this back in, cut this one out, take this cell, drag it down, and then paste that back in. Uh, 
All right, well, I'll just have to type it back in. So there's my Y's. All right, so we've got the Y values in there. And then depending upon which one of the rules we're going to execute, Riemann's, Trapezoid, or Simpson's, we're going to also need double those Y values or four times those Y values. So I can go ahead and easily get those in there as well. So I can say two times the Y value that's been calculated. Enter and drag that down to the extent that I'm going to need those. And I can take four times the Y value. and drag that down. Okay, so as we know for a Riemann sum, we just pick one of the two endpoints, doesn't matter which one. Um, we either do the whole process with left endpoints or right endpoints or midpoints even. And we multiply the partition width times each of the y values, that gives us the value or the area of one of the rectangles, and we add all those things up. So. A shorter way of doing that is to add all the y values up. So we can do that down here and multiply the sum of all of the y values by the partition width. So if I wanted to do, say, right endpoints, then I would ignore the first x value here in my and y value and I would start at the negative 7.58. So I could say I'm going to take the sum of all of these numbers all the way up to 8 and I'm going to multiply that times the partition width times the B30. And so that gives me an estimate of the area. That would be for using right endpoints. I could also do the same thing for left endpoints. So I could do another one here where I do a sum of all of the left endpoints. So then I would start at zero or at, at two and I'd stop just short of eight. And then multiply that times the partition width. So it's giving me two estimates there, one on the low end, one on the high end. There's a couple things I could do with a Riemann. So for the trapezoidal rule, it was a little more complicated. For the trapezoidal rule, we needed both endpoints, and we needed double of all of the interior points. So I'm going to need for this one to take the sum of the two endpoints, the left and right bounds, I can grab them up here. Take this guy plus this guy and then add to that all of the interior points, so everything except the two and the eight, doubled. So all of those guys And then for that one, I have to multiply by delta x halves. So times delta x divide by 2. Enter. So that gives me a tighter estimate. And that sh should sort of seem reasonable here. Between my left bound and my right bound, I'm now getting a trapezoidal rule that's a little tighter yet. And then for Simpson's rule, I need to take delta x thirds times the sum of the endpoints and then alternating four times the first one, two times the second y, four times the third y back and forth until I get to uh, the end of the list. There was a requirement as we used Simpson's rule that we needed to have I believe it turned out we needed to have an even number of subintervals. So this one's going to be very particular on how many of these things we have to work with so that we can get the right format. Yeah, we need an even number.
subintervals. So we'll have to be cautious there. We may not be able to go all the way out, depending on how many we have. So for this one, we will have in our sum the endpoints. So the left bound plus the right bound plus we need to have the four times all of the odd ones. So that would be this one and 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 then we need to have two times all the even ones. So that would be that and that. And we needed to make sure that the, ooh, oops. Make those plus signs. Let's say we needed to make sure that we started and ended with something to times of four, and that turned out to be the case for our number of partitions, so we got them all. Okay, and then we're supposed to take that whole number and multiply it by delta x divided by three. And that gives us yet another estimate. Again, very, very close, very tight. So I'll stop there, and perhaps I'll make another video where I formalize some of these calculations into a more specific uh, sort of repeat process algorithm here. But for now, there's a basic idea.